In this video, we're talking about everything you need to know about living in Rochester, New York. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Guys, my name is Anthony Hamilton. I'm with the American Home Team here at EXP Realty in the Rochester and Finger Lakes region. As much as I love making all this content on the Rochester and Finger Lakes region for you, I would love even more to help you with those real estate needs. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, I'd be honored to be the team of choice. Definitely don't hesitate to reach out. You can never get the process started too soon when you're relocating to a new area. So that being said, let's get into the video. Today, we're talking about everything there is to know about Rochester, New York. All right, so Rochester is located just north of the Finger Lakes and just on the south side of Lake Ontario, but then it's also located to the east of Lake Erie. And so because of that, you got the two great lakes right there, the climate, is it's mild but your winters can get kind of harsh and a lot of people you can read them in the comment section you know some people have said that rot living in rochester is like living in a freezer for six months out of the year and you know it, i guess it's kind of true um it's really not that bad it's it's not it, the worst part about our winters here in rochester in the finger lakes region is that it's so inconsistent you can't even predict it the meteorologists on tv might as well not even have a job because it's damn near impossible the lake effect does what it wants to do so in the summertime you average you know really the mid 80s all uh, all summer maybe upper 70s so it's a beautiful summer it's not too hot not you know not too uh cold i guess for summertime it's it's nice and mild what i will say is that i personally wish that there was more sun um like direct sunlight not cloud covered sunlight new york state in in the rochester region specifically has some of the least amount of direct sunlight days in the united states that's not saying it's gray all the time in the summertime it's not it's this summer has actually been great but you know summertime it's it's mild as far as the weather goes um winter time is definitely what gets people a lot of people hate 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 the winter time and you know we have a lot of snowbirds people who live here during a majority of the the year and then for the winter season go down south um it's not just your retirees either it's a lot of people who work remote as well and um that's just what they like because they they hate the winter time and we get it here so rochester you know doesn't get as much snow as the cities like syracuse or buffalo buffalo especially um, but it does get a significant amount of snow, more than your average in the United States. Uh, but that being said, it's not terrible. What I personally hate about the climate in Rochester is that sometimes in the winter time, well, a lot of the time in the winter time, it'll warm up and then it'll freeze again. So when it warms up, it'll start to rain. The snow will turn over to rain and then it'll turn over to snow again, but you get a lot of ice when it refreezes. So it creates slick conditions, a lot of black ice. And during that time period, a lot of people forget how to drive. So when you're driving through Rochester or out right outside of Rochester, you're probably gonna see a lot of accidents. And so if you're on the road, you definitely need to be careful of that because it seems like a lot of people forget how to drive in the winter time a lot of ice it'll get you if you don't have your all season or your snow tires so just be cognizant of that and you know rochester it does have all four seasons and a lot of people travel to this area to experience the northeast in the fall time um just the leaves changing is beautiful and you know it's great what i will say about this area most people you know most people like the summers but what a lot of people like even more is the spring and the fall time the fall especially like your october your halloween the spooky season right is is very mild you're talking you know upper 60s maybe um, maybe low 60s so it's not too cold but it's nice like sweatshirt weather and uh you don't sweat every time you go outside and it's just it's a it's beautiful out plus you got the 
the falling leaves and the color changes and it's just a beautiful time of year a lot of people in the area love it especially certain parts in downtown rochester so you like the park ave area or the east ave area where there's a lot of foliage um you got the the leaves falling and it's just it's just a beautiful time and then you get the the decorations out and you start getting the lights out and stuff like that and it just creates a really nice aesthetic in the city um, and just in the outskirts of Rochester. So uh, that part is great, but really what you got to look out for is the winter time. Like I said, definitely need your all season tires or your winter tires and you need to have a, a nice coat and possibly some snow pants and boots because um, it does get snowy here. All right, so the next thing that I want to touch on is the cost of living in the Rochester area. Guys, Rochester is, a lot cheaper cost of living than a majority of places throughout the United States. We're talking 10 to 15% cheaper in every category you can think of than a majority of the United States. And that's pretty significant when you're talking about gas, you're talking about cost of groceries, talking about gas, cost of parts for your car or, you know, literally whatever, daycare, things like that. Whatever you need to pay for, it's most likely going to be cheaper here. Now, 10 to 15 percent depending on what you're buying is that significant i don't know that's really a, a personal kind of thing but the the numbers are pretty significant when you think about 10 to 15 percent across the board cost of living that is significant so your money can get stretched a lot further here in rochester um rather than a place like say southern california or just california in general right where you're probably your cost of living is probably like 50 percent higher than the national average right whereas here you're 10 to 15 percent lower than national average so you're living with a lot more bang for your buck here in rochester it's not going to break the bank by living here um and you know your housing is still relatively affordable we're a good two to four years behind the rest of the country as far as home prices go so you're still finding uh significantly um what would the, livable or just still like nice houses for 200,000 250,000 uh you know definitely 300,000 you're finding a really nice house for and then of course you can get up into the millions right one two three four million but um this area you're not you're really not stretching past you know on the high side i think there's one property listed on kendigua lake for 6.5 right now that's an anomaly for sure you're we haven't hit those numbers yet and um i believe aside from like a bunch of commercial properties where big conglomerates are buying them you know for a residential property you're not finding something for for 6.5 very often and i i don't believe it'll sell at that i just don't you're finding more more likely what you're finding in in the rochester area is anywhere from 150 to 350 maybe 400,000 are going to be your it's going to be your sweet spot for a, a nice home that's affordable and livable right now you start getting above that and you start getting into some really nice luxurious houses um you know in your towns like pittsford penfield brighton uh menden right in, in a lot of your suburbs um greece and irondequoit have a few as well if you're talking if you're talking by the water by irondequoit bay etc right um webster is very nice as well so you can get a lot of your higher end properties in those areas um city of rochester probably not you might be finding some luxury condos in the city of rochester much like any other city but as far as um housing prices go the higher end stuff you're gonna have to get into some of the suburbs but you know closer to the city you're gonna be looking anywhere from 150 to maybe three or four hundred thousand depending on where you are so still very affordable for a lot of people especially if you're coming from a more expensive state chances are you're selling a house and you have some of that money to put up to be able to afford um one of those higher end homes so uh you know you definitely got that here all within a close proximity to the city of rochester if you care to be so um just overall cost of living is 
you know it's great here you're not breaking the bank just by living here and um some people don't really care about cost of living other people do a lot of people that we we talk to care about the cost of living it matters to people when you're moving to a new area that's something that you have to consider um you know it's just where can you get the most bang for your buck and rochester is one of those places Healthcare, education, technology, and manufacturing, those are the four big uh, career areas in the Rochester area. Um, the biggest market for development and growth uh, as far as job opportunities go. So Rochester, I mean, those are the biggest industries here and you have an abundance of them. You know, Rochester is home to some of the tier one hospitals here. Uh, Strong Memorial Hospital is an amazing employer for one, but then it's obviously a top tier hospital. Uh, people get flown in from other states to get care at Strong Memorial Hospital. Um, Highland Hospital, you got uh, Rochester General Hospital. You have so many healthcare facilities and they're all amazing as well you have uh you know in education you have university of rochester you have rochester institute of technology you have st john fisher college um nazareth college so you have so many options if you're looking in uh at a job in higher ed right like a professor or something like that as well as just a, a not just a school teacher but a school teacher as well right k through 12 um there's tons of opportunities whether it's in the city schools or some of the suburban schools the the schools in the towns outside so your pittsford menden your uh pittsford sutherland your penfield your brighton your um you know all these other schools fairports and candegua and victor the area is huge in education and um you know a lot of the school districts here are ranked on niche.com for having uh being the best schools for teachers to work at so that's pretty significant when you're talking about people who are uh you know kind of they're they're teaching the future of <laughs> your children right so it, it's pretty important there um and they get paid uh paid pretty decently as well so it's not like they're super underpaid i i think good teachers are always underpaid but in these areas um they are paid fairly i guess and uh you know there's a lot of school districts that don't pay them as well but in the rochester area they get paid pr pretty well so um that's pretty significant to note but if you're moving to the rochester area there are tons of career opportunities and any you know really anywhere from starter jobs like your minimum wage your college high school type jobs to um super advanced careers in technology or healthcare or anything like that so anything from a surgeon or an engineer or whatever all the way down to you know a, a high school type job so you definitely have it all here you're not going to miss a beat moving from wherever you're moving from to the rochester area as far as getting a job goes so you can definitely feel confident and comfortable knowing that moving right along a lot of the uh so a lot of you guys are moving here with a family and so something that's really important to you obviously is education in the rochester region and the suburbs around the rochester city ha are among some of the top uh schools in the state whether it's athletics or arts or you know just other extracurriculars like musical things like that the schools around here literally have everything that you could ever be offered and they're some of the top in the state and some in the nation uh for those programs so we have a lot of athletes come out of our area we have a lot of um actors actresses um broadway stars right swimmers um you name it there's tons of high level professionals that come out of these high schools in in the area and 
um, you know, when you go on niche.com and, and they're ranking all the schools, you can find all the Rochester schools, all, all the schools around Rochester, I should say, you know, within the top 30 in the state. So that's just amazing. When, when you're coming here with a family, that's something that's super important to you. You can feel confident knowing that the, the schools around here, literally you can't go wrong being at any of them. And if you're moving here and you're an outdoor enthusiast, Rochester may be for you. There's so many parks and trails and bike paths and uh, bike parks and skate parks and, uh, you know, hillsides and things like that that you can go explore and hike and fish. And you have the Irondequoit Bay, you have Lake Ontario, you have all the, the, the Genesee River, you have... Um, all the parks around here, Highland Park for uh, a lot of the, the lilacs, if you're into um, horticulture and things like that, um, you have so much around here. And then if, if you don't want to be near the city, you have all the state parks like you've got. Um, so down in Naples, you have Grimes Glen, you have High Tour, and then you go into Watkins Glen and you um, there are a bunch of camping sites, a bunch of uh, gorges that you can hike, a bunch of waterfalls, things like that. Right. So if you're an outdoor enthusiast, you literally can't go wrong. Not only that, but you're only about a three hour drive from the Adirondack Mountains. Um, I was just there recently. We went on a hike in if you're a hiker, you need to go to the Adirondacks and do the 46 high peaks. Obviously, there's 46 of them, and they're all fairly challenging hikes. Um, you know, Mount Marcy being the highest point in New York State. And uh, you can go hike that in a day if you want. Um, you know, anywhere, I think it's like 15 to 17 miles or something like that. But uh, you definitely want to prepare for them. They're challenging. But... If you want to take a day trip or a two-day trip, a weekend trip, something like that, three hours away, you can go get some really good hikes in the deep into the mountains and uh, enjoy that time. But if you don't want to travel that far, you go down to Naples or Italy Valley or, um, you know, really anywhere in between the lakes and you can get some really good hiking in, really good fishing. Uh, they do trout derbies and all sorts of stuff. So... If you're an outdoor enthusiast, you won't be disappointed in the Rochester area and the surrounding areas. Um, there's definitely a lot to do and you just can't go wrong with it. And so community engagement is something that's super important to a lot of people when they're moving to a new area. Are there things to get out and do? And what I will say is in the Rochester area, yes, there's a lot to do. And specifically, Rochester is known as Festival City. So anything from, uh, let's see, um, arts to music to uh food to other cultures there's all sorts of festivals that you can go get out and do and engage in the community a lot of people will set up their small business tables and they'll go sell some product to um to people and you know you, you kind of walk around table to table buy from local vendors fairport has the uh, canal days which same kind of thing it lines the canal in in fairport and you go and buy local products made by small business owners in the area and it's all great great stuff and, and really help your local economy thrive um which it's already doing but thrive even more which only benefits you by living in the community right so so anything from music to art to food to culture it's just you have it here rochester is festival city so um just something that's important to know that you're when you when you come here you're going to be able to get out and do stuff and engage in the community meet new people network with new people and uh really just you know enjoy your time here and not be secluded from the rest of the community another question that we get asked when people are moving here is what is your health care like and i i mentioned it in the employment section but rochester is home to the university of rochester which houses some of the top hospitals in the nation uh, strong memorial hospital and highland hospital rochester general hospital unity hospital all sorts of um these hospitals and healthcare facilities and they're like i said they're they're top of the nation they're tier one hospitals they're they're just amazing whether it's trauma or whether it's routine care you're you know you can feel confident that your family is going to be taken care of at one of these places and it just makes uh, parents 
feel reassured knowing that if your kid is playing football and heaven forbid gets hurt they have a great place to go to and get cared for and you know all the way down to your family doctors where you're going to be going more routinely to they're just amazing they kind of they might fall under that university of rochester umbrella and you're going to be taken care of there so no worries on the healthcare front And the next thing is transportation. So when you're looking at moving to an area, guys, I will say if you're moving to Rochester, you should have a vehicle. Um, most of you probably do anyway. So you're thinking this is crazy. Why would someone not have a vehicle? Well, people do move here and they don't have vehicles, whether they're moving from another country or something like that, which we have their you know they have to sell their vehicle in that country because they don't want to ship it here it'll be less expensive to just buy a new car here and sell their old car there right you definitely need a vehicle though you have the rts bus system which is very cheap it'll take you within the city limits you're probably going to have to wait on it you're going to have to wait at the bus stop you know sometimes fights can occur on these buses all, all sorts of kind of things so i personally i would not recommend uh relying on the rts bus system you do have some taxi services but taxis are kind of a thing of the past with uber and lyft now so you do have uber and lyft that are abundant but if you don't have a vehicle and you're relying on those all the time then you know it's going to be pretty costly you better have quite a bit of money in your pocket um but that being said rochester is a very bike friendly city uh and you know it's a walkable city so you can really walk from anywhere to anywhere uh it's not going to take you that long if you have a bike it'll be much faster there are bike lanes throughout the city on almost every street there's bike lanes or sidewalks so that's good to know but again i would definitely have a vehicle because especially in the winter time you're not going to want to ride your bike in the snow. It's probably going to be tough pushing because uh, it, it can get pretty deep sometimes. And you're probably not going to be walking or not want to be walking in the snow because it can get deep. It can get cold. Your shoes are going to get wet. You're going to have a miserable day at work and um, it's just not going to be fun. So definitely get a car, whether that's a beater for the winter time or if it's a nice car you're, you're going to want a vehicle so just something to keep in mind something to budget for if you don't already have one um or something to consider when you're moving here if you need to upgrade your vehicle or something like that you you definitely need one though and last but certainly not least is the safety of the area so rochester is generally speaking despite what a lot of people say in the comments which you might see on the news or whatever it is generally a safe city now you have pockets of the city just like any city uh in the world where it's going to be dangerous you might not want to go out at nighttime. you might not want to be by yourself right there's certain pockets like that but a majority of the city is pretty walkable now what i will say is that anywhere that you go in the world anywhere that you go in the united states or any other country freak things can happen right freak things can happen so you always just want to be aware um you want to have escape routes you you know these kind of things you want to prepare for the worst case scenario should that ever happen which hopefully it never does but generally speaking rochester is a fairly safe city um now what you see in the news is in pockets of the city so you're going to hear in the news that it's the second worst city per capita uh, in murders, right? Which is a statistic. Um, but a majority of those murders happen in a certain area. And so, you know, if, if you get in contact with us, we can let you know kind of where these areas are and you make the decisions. We can't tell you exactly where to go, where not to go, right? That's, that's a bad thing. But we can show you maps of crime... Uh, uh, crime statistics and crime rates and things like that. You can also do the research yourself and see where these pockets are that are bad, uh, bad areas and the most crime ridden areas, right? It'll literally look like a map and it's going to have like red and yellow and all sorts of colors in certain areas. And, um, 
you know, you probably want to avoid those areas if you're if you care about being in a safe place. Um, but generally speaking, Rochester is a pretty safe area, especially surrounding Rochester. You get right outside of the inner city um, into the suburbs a little bit more. You're talking very safe. So uh, I would I wouldn't pay attention to the comments in the comment sections of these videos. I wouldn't pay attention to the news headlines because they're all talking about specific areas and it can kind of uh, distort the perception of the city if you're just listening to them. Because again, anywhere that you go in the United States, you're going to have crime. It it just happens. It, that's, that's life, right? It's unfortunate, but that's life. Um, but, you know, again, when it comes to Rochester, it's a majority of these like little pockets that it happens in. And um, you're generally safe in many other parts of the city. So consider that it's not all bad just like any other city in the world so um that being said guys we would love to help you in your move or or relocation to the rochester and finger lakes region of upstate new york and um or really anywhere that you're moving even if you don't move here we still have connections in other states and other cities that we can connect you with and help get you the best help possible to help your move be as smooth and uh you know easy as as humanly possible and really that's our goal here on this channel and living in the finger lakes um so if you want more content like this be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified every time i post a new video and reach out to the information on the bottom of your screens uh i am the one who answers those text emails and phone calls definitely don't hesitate to reach out and reach out before you know, well before you're looking to make the move. We don't want it to be last minute and now we're in a time crunch, right? We want to have time to prepare you and take you through all the steps of moving here and relocating so that so that everything is good, so that we don't miss any steps, right? So definitely reach out to the information on the screen. Until the next video, guys, we'll see you.